Just dive into God's Word because it's really good. What's the purpose of uh, 3 John? What's the purpose of 3 John? Come on now. This is the test. This is a real test. All right. What's the purpose of 3 John? Dakota. Maryland. The purpose of 3 John. Mom. Second John. <laughs> it sure does. I like her. That's just, and they follow First John. First, Second, and Third John are all written together. He just keeps uh, combining them. Now, what is the what is John? What is the point that John is driving across? Warning the church. Huh? Warning the church. Warning churches. All right. Now we're going to get to that in this in this book here. All of them are written to churches. Okay. Now this one here, he writes it, he actually puts Gaius in there, doesn't he? Alright, he's probably one of the leaders in this church. But evidently, now we're going to get to that a little bit later, but he had sent, and this is the second letter that he sent to this church. The other one got destroyed. There was a guy in there, there by the name of Diotrephes that destroyed it. Diotrephes is one of the uh, sympathizers and leaders in, the, in what kind of a movement, the, the false movement? That, that did or try to do away with the person of God in Christ? Huh? Gnostics. 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 All right. The, the, the Gnostics today are what group? The Jehovah's Jehovah Jehovah Witnesses. All right. Jehovah's Witnesses and Gnostics are the same same ilk. Okay. Now, <coughs> he, uh, he had written a letter to this church, and it got interceded and intercepted and uh, destroyed. We don't have any history of it at all, except reference. Okay. So he sent this second letter by way, probably, of Jimmy. Jimmy sent, um, well, Demetrius is, is a name. The Greek name is Demetrius. So he sent Demetrius there, probably Demetrius, to give the letter to Gaius to get it to the church. All right? Because he knew that Gaius was a faithful person. All right? And he would get it to the church. And the church would finally get to, to hear John's words. And we're going to get all of that as we go. This is a very short letter, but that's where we are so far. He's fighting Gnosticism, and he's uh, uh, honoring the God of the Bible, which became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Last uh, Sunday afternoon, I taught on the Trinity. You're not going to see three gods. Did you know that? There aren't three gods. We believe in a triune God or a Trinity. The only physical manifestation of God that the world has ever seen is Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Jesus is God in flesh. Period. That's the only God you're ever going to see. I don't care whether you're a Mohammedan or whatever. When they come before, they not, may not believe in Jesus today as God, but I guarantee you one thing. All knees will bend. And every mouth will confess that Jesus is God in the future. That's what's going to happen. Alright, now let's go back to uh, <clears throat> 1 and 4. My zone Teron. My Two-tone. Two-tone. I like a two-tone car. Alright. Oop. Echo. Haran. Hina. Akuo. Ta. Emma. No. I like that. In. Hey. Alithea. All right, this one's harder. Parapatuonta. Parapatuonta. All right, I helped you with that one. See, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying hearing you guys read before I do. Now, in your lexicons. All right. In your lexicons. I want you to turn to section... Number eight, Num Roman numera in the front of the lexicon, section number eight. I want to teach you a little something here. This is a comparative, all right? Section number eight. In the front, you have the table of contents and all this kind of stuff, and then you have tables, and then it'll say section. See that word where it says section there? Those of you that have this, you want to go to section number eight. All right. Looking at the questions. Comparison to adjectives. All right. Take that down, circle that, do whatever you want to. Now you'll go right over here, and as a matter of fact, you're going to see this very comparative. See that? All right. 
Now, you, all your adjectives and pronouns and everything, it's going to tell you about them here and your numerals and your cardinals and all of that. It's going to tell you that in the front of the lexicon. I'm throwing you into a little bit deeper Greek tonight, okay, so you can study a little bit. How many of you even knew that was there? Uh, yeah, okay, well, there it is. It tells you a, bit, a little bit about the comparatives. Okay, the comparatives. My zoteron. My zoteron. Greater. All right, it's accusing singular feminine. Of these things not, I have joy. I don't have any greater joy, it says. In order that, <coughs> greater of these, two tone, uk, adverb of negation, actually it's not lee. Okay? If you literally want to translate that's not lee, it's a it's a not with a with action to it. Okay? Continually continually not? Absolutely not. Not lee. Echo I have first person singular, present indicative active. Joy, Karan, the word grace comes from this too, doesn't it? Happiness, joy, grace. Ena, in order that, that little conjunction, page 201, if you want to write that page number down there. Akuo, I hear. We get our word acoustics from that. It, your optic nerve is what? What's the optic nerve? It's in the ear. Isn't it? It's the ear, all right? I uh, <coughs> lost my hearing in my right ear, basically because the optic nerve was severed when I had a facial fracture. All right? The optic nerve. We get our word optic from that right out of the Greek. Okay? Now you can tell your teacher that, Dakota. All right? Did you say optic or optic? Uh, optic. Optic nerve. All right? Optic is eye. Yeah. That comes from ophthalmos okay. in Greek. That's another word, ophthalmos. That's the word eye. All right? <coughs> In order, order that I hear the my, the my children, the children of me, if you want to put that down there, all right? My children, these, these were probably converts of John's at one time. When I hear my children in the truth walking about, in te alethea. Now, when John talks about in the truth, you know what he's talking about? This is what we call an objective close, by the way. John is talking about those people that are doctrinally sound, that believe in the true person of Jesus Christ, because there's some, there was a rascal called Diotrephes that came into this church. You know what Diotrephes means? Diotrephes. All right? It, it, it divides, all right, and splits. But really, what is the Latin word for God? It comes from the what? Yeah. Dios. 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 All right. It comes from the Latin and Greek phrase too. And the term for Zeus, Zeus, the Zeus, the god Zeus. Mm -hmm. What this term Diotrephes actually means is an adopted child of Zeus, mm. are fed by and nourished by Zeus. Okay. That's what the atrophies actually means. Now, these children, techno, what does techno mean? Mom, you remember what techno means? Techne technically, you know what techno means? Speaking uh, child. I know she always tells me this. Live verse. Live verse. All right. That pedia, pies is the speaking child. All right. So we know what it is. Techno. These live verse. These people were live verse. I tell you what, there's some dead people in church. They don't believe. Did you know that? One of them was Diotrephes. He's a dead man. But he was a leader. All right? Now, 1 Corinthians 4.14, 2 Corinthians 6.13, Philippians 1.23, Galatians 4.19, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 11, 1 Timothy 1 and 2, 2 Timothy 1 and 2, Philemon 10, 1 John 2 and 1, and 2 John 4 and Ephesians 3 and 8 are all cross reference to this verse. Okay? I know that's a lot. You won't get it, but you can get it on the tape. Go back and listen to it again. All right? All right. Now number five. Verse number five. We're sliding right along here. Talks about cooperation and opposition. All right? Agapete. Agapete. Yes, 
The stone, poies, hole, yon, ergase, ace, foos, adelphus, tuto, zenus. All right. Now he's talking about some. Uh, He's praising true hospitality here, and he's actually referring back to some of the some of the times in the Old Testament when <coughs> I told you about Abraham uh, entertaining angels that night came to visit, and they said, "How many times have you entertained angels?" It says, I think, in the Book of James, it talks about angels coming to visit. How many angels have you ever had around the house, there, Marilyn? Several. Okay. All right. Some angels. How about you, Dakota? How many angels have you seen today? Have you seen any stars? Nobody knocked you down playing basketball or anything today? How many of you have seen there, Mom? You don't know. I'll tell you what, I've had a lot of them around me over, over in my life because I know that I'd be a goner if it wasn't for some angels at times. We have angels. I guess angels maybe even appear to people maybe today. Maybe. I want to say something. Yes. I know there's guardian angels. Yes, oh, we know that. that. Yes, we know that. Yeah. We experience things sometimes like that. Guardian angels. Irma got hit today by a car. She did. Not in her car. In her person. In her person? And you were here. Wow. Yeah. What? Yeah, guardian angels. Guardian angels. All right. We know that they're here. Marilyn one time was going to step out on the street. What happened, Marilyn? Something held my leg. She couldn't go. And the car zipped right by. Just like oh. that. She couldn't go. And then the car, just like this. There are, <coughs> this happens. I can't explain it. It happens. Beloved, Agapete. I go pay it. I go pay it. I go pay it. I go I say that many times to Dakota. I go pay it. I go pay it. Ace Tony on Tony on. Forever and ever, I tell her, I love you, my beloved. Forever and ever. I go pay it. That means beloved one. He means it too. Lock it. All right, beloved and faithful. All right, beloved and faithful. Now, this is kind of a play on words. We don't really, can't really translate it, this into English exactly like it is in Greek because it actually is very stumbling. Has anyone got a translation there? Does, it, does anyone have a translation? I'd love to have an <laughs> amplified Bible if anybody's got one. Huh? Left it on the shelf. You left it on the shelf. That amplified Bible is so good when you study Greek. It'll explain a lot of things. Because they did some pretty good stuff. David, do you have it there? I just did King James. Okay, what, is that? what did the king say? It said, uh, he said, Beloved, thou dost faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. Okay. Beloved, you make sure that you practice. You make sure. You be faithful that you practice. Whatever you may do and practice. All right? Let's look at some of these verbs here. Beloved, make sure. That word faithful there, it means to, to make sure. Be faithful to make sure. You do. Second person singular, present indicative active means you practice all the time. Do this daily. Make this a habit in your life. Whatever you may work. Now, I'll tell you what. God doesn't make you work, does he? What's that? What mode's that in? It ain't up there. That, that word, eon, all right, that is a third-class conditional. D condition undetermined, but with prospect of determination. And it is because it's in the subjunctive mode, all right? And subjunctive sometimes can be in the middle voice also. Whichever way you look at it here, it's, it comes out. Whichever work you may do voluntarily of your own volition. Middle voice of your own volition, subjunctive, whichever you may do. Okay? The 
toward the brothers. All right, that's accusative plural masculine. See that tus adelphus, accusative. Accusative is a sign. All right, is is a is a direct object. So you're whatever you're doing to brothers. All right, and this or even strangers, all right? Brothers and strangers. <clears throat> Acts 1, 15, Galatians 6 and 10, 3 John 3 and verse 10 also, and Romans 12 and 13, Hebrews 13 and verse 2, Revelation 21 and verse 5, Colossians 3, 23, 1 Peter 4, 9, 1 Timothy 3, 2 and 5, 10, Titus 1 and 8, Hebrews 13 and 2, and 2 John 10. These are all cross-references to this verse. Now, anyone, can anyone read that first one there? That's a definite article, isn't it? All right. Hoi. Imaktiresan. 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 Su, su, te, agape, enopion, ecclesios, us, kalos, poese, pro, pepsos, oxios, tu, theu. All right. Now here is another gob of cross references. John 13 and verse 20, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 19 and 35, Acts 15 and 3, Titus 3.13, Colossians 1.10, 1 Thessalonians 2.12, 1 Corinthians 7.37, Philippians 4.14, 2 Peter 1 and verse 19, Acts 15.3, 20.38, 5, 1 Corinthians 16 and 6, and 2 Corinthians 11, all of that. And, or 2 Corinthians 1.16, well, that is. And then 1 Thessalonians 2.12, Romans 16.2, Philippians 1.27, Ephesians 4 and 1. That's a lot of cross-referencing. Now we have here the ones, witness. All right? The ones they witness, if you want to really put it down in, in every person where you get it all out there. The ones they witness, the ones there... It's actually a the, that's what we call a uh, nominee plural masculine. If you want to write that down also, nominee plural masculine definite article. Now that ones there, that's a practical substantive. I know I'm really throwing some big words at you, but that's understood. The ones they witness of you in the love. Their love witnesses concerning them. In opium. Down in the presence of, the very eyes of, the assembly. All right? Ecclesia. What is the ecclesia? Give me the history of the ecclesia. Just a little bit. Who knows that? Know that, Irma? What's it in Spanish? Ecclesia. Ecclesia. All right. What does that ecclesia mean? Assembly. It's the assembly. It is not the building. It is the humanity in that building. It's the people. All right? The people. The assembly. Down in the presence of the assembly. Whom? Well, you shall do. Kalos, that's a little word which means to please. And it's used in James 2 and 19 and Acts 10 33. Also in this way. Uh, Poieses. You shall do, third per, or second person singular, future indicative, active, from poyo, which means to do, a product of employment. All right. We got a word poem made from this, the word poem. What do you do when you make a poem? You make words rhyme and fit together. You form them. And then, and then it says pro pantsos. Nobody singular masculine, first aorist, participle, and active. It's punctual your action, but actually it's a continuous and point. It happened in time, a period of time, but it was carried out. Sent forth on a journey. All right? Sent forth on a journey. Worthily 
of the God. Now, when you when somebody comes to your house, especially back then, how many motels and super eights and all that kind of stuff were there back then? We think about motels. We think about Jesus, uh, uh, Joseph and Mary, when Jesus was about to be born, when they went and they looked and there was no room for them in the inn. We think about them having motels back there, but really there wasn't any motels. People had sheds out here, and little buildings out here, and sometimes people would rent them out to people when they come. And in around Jerusalem and Bethlehem and everything, they had buildings out there that were mostly unoccupied a lot of times of the year, but they use them to entertain strangers. Now, if you had somebody coming through the countryside and uh, he was dressed in a certain way, do you think the people knew who the Magi were when they came along? Oh, no doubt. How come? Because of the way they were dressed. Well, the way they were dressed and the way they royalty. carried themselves. Huh. That's right. They were royalty. All right. Royal. They had a high clothing. They they, they had a high calling and, and royalty. How about a rabbi? Now we, we don't think much of rabbis because of the rabbis of Jesus' time. Most of them were rascals. But a rabbi. How about a rabbi? How how did you treat a rabbi when a rabbi came into the house? What does the word rabbi mean, Marilyn? Doctor. Doctor what? Theology. Doctor of theology. That was the highest calling of doc of a uh, of of education at that time. Did you know that every lawyer, this would really work today. It would help out today. Every lawyer at one time in history had to have a doctor of theology before he could get anything else. Every medical doctor had to earn his doctorate of theology first. That was the first stage of learning. And today it still should be. Makes sense. If you know who God is, you'll know how to... That's the way you'll know how to... Medicine. Every judge had to have a Ph.D. first. It would be good if it was that way today. Maybe they would know God. Maybe they would understand God first. Our country would be different. The courtrooms would be different. That's right. The people's lives would be different. All right? It was customary... When you had visitors like a rabbi or whatever, you let them stay in your home so many days. And when they left, you escorted them to the, to the edge of your town and make sure they had a safe journey away from you. You did that. In first, uh, Romans uh, 15 and verse 24, it talks about this, refers to it a little bit. Titus 3.13, First Thessalonians 2.12, Romans 16 and verse 2, and Philippians 1.27, and Ephesians 4 and 1. It refers to this custom. Now, I said, you ought to remember. Now, this is a custom of our people. Remember, God's people are more precious than those roving rabbis and those roving magi or whatever. Not only that, and, and John goes on to tell this in the very next verse. I think I'll just wait to tell you there. But there were a lot of traveling philosophers peddling their own philosophy, like the Gnostics. They were traveling around and they were selling people a, a, a bill of goods. We see this so much today on television. 50% of what you watch on television, you know, I won't watch regular television. I don't do that. My mother will call me uh, every now and then, you got to watch this show. And I said, has it got commercials in it? Yep. I said, well, I'm not going to know. <laughs> I won't watch anything with commercials in it. I don't have time. I'm not going to watch all these commercials. And I'm sure not going to sit there and watch a three, a one-hour show and it's stretched out to three hours because I don't have that much time to fool around with it. Okay? If I want to see it, I want to see the Reader's Digest version of it without commercials. Salesman. Dakota will be watching on TV or something on television and she will say, Dad, this is exactly what you need. Come and look at this. I don't have to get it from television. I'll get it from Dakota. <laughs> Dad, this is what you need for your back or your for your foot or, or your hear, hearing or for your hair, you know, whatever. <laughs> They're all the time selling something. Now they've come to the point that uh, America is going to start, uh, they have started uh, editing what commercials they have out there. 
because it's reaching young people, and it reached young people in such a bad way with bad food and stuff. Even in the high schools now, they won't allow them to sell certain drinks and certain foods because it's bad for them. It causes disease in their lives. Traveling salesman. Somebody's always got a way to get rich quick, don't they? Or instant potatoes. How many of you ever? Huh? Instant rice, instant oatmeal, instant potatoes. Microwave. Everybody wants something right now, real fast. I'm going to tell you something. It didn't start in the 21st century, in the 20th century. It was way back there. How would you like to go to... And they tell you this. In your spare time, earn your doctorate. <laughs> oh, I went to school 12 years. I studied. I didn't, I didn't keep my... My nose was in books for 12 years. Now, Marilyn, where is my nose today? Still, <laughs> Still in books all the time. That was a bad habit start. Now I've studied just to teach you. I have to go remember. I started studying the book of Hebrews again. I had written that thing about 14, 15 years ago, written a commentary on it, went through the thing, and man, I, man I go, I'm learning all over again. I'm remembering what I wrote. It's great stuff in there. I can't hardly wait to teach that book. That's exciting, boy. I mean, there's some dynamite stuff in that book. We ought to fill the classroom up for, for a while. I hope we get enough advertising. Traveling salesmen, traveling philosophers, people that are making money off of other people. You can go down here to the Double Tree and this place and that place, the Great Line or whatever they got around here now, and you can learn how to make millions in six months. You can learn how to be a genius overnight. It creates your more brain power, all this. Well, this philosophy has always been out there. And they were traveling salesmen and peddlers of philosophy even back in Paul's and John's day. And that's what he's going to say here. And verse number seven now. Hyper. We get our word hyper right out of this. Okay, hyper. Hyperactive. Hypoglycemia. Hypo hyperglycemia. All these terms. Remember I told you the medical terms in, in Greek. Hyper. Hyper means what, Dakota? Super, too much. When you got hyperglycemia, what do you got? High blood sugar. If you got hypoglycemia, <laughs> what do you have? Low blood sugar. Glucose. The word glucose comes from Greek also. All of these are Greek terms. Hyper, nar, to, onomatos, ex elephone. Maydane, Lombonontes, Apo, Ton, Ethnicon. All right, there's some good stuff in here. I, when I ever I ask somebody what their name is, sometimes I'll say Onomate. It is absolutely, when I, when I think about name, when I think about somebody's name, Onomate comes into my mind. What it literally means is put a name on it. Name to him. Name to her. That's what it literally means. Name to him, name to her. Our word name comes right out of that. You just drop the onomatis and it's a nomos. And what it actually means, if you go all the way back, you'll find that word, the word means law. When you sign your name on the dotted line, it becomes law. Nomos, onomate. Name to him, name to her. Okay? Name to him, name to her. On behalf of the name. Alright, the name. Now, <clears throat> by whose name do we meet tonight? Jesus. By the name of Jesus. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 16 and 18. Acts, the first chapter. All of this we see together. By, by the name, the name, the name of Jesus. We got people that uh, 
We, you know, remember we were out there, Brother David, we were out there at Sonic here a couple of years ago, yeah. maybe. And that guy comes up there, and he's a flake in the beginning. I'm baptized in the name of Jesus. All this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus, you're not baptized. You're not saved if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus. But what is the name of Jesus? What what description did he give to us when he says baptize them in what? Ace to onama in the name of what? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now there aren't three gods. They're one God. When you do something in the name of Jesus, who are you doing it in? In the name of God. The triune God. So if you do anything in the name of Jesus, you do it in the name of the triune God. If you do it in the name of the triune God, you do it in the name of Jesus. The creed. What is the creed? Okay. For Gar has to start it off because actually you have a little old conjunctive casual particle there. By the way, you can look that one up on page 75 in that book. Now, if you ever get uh, A.T. Roberts's giant Greek grammar, it's on page 1190. Okay. That's Gar. For on behalf of the name, they went out. They were sent out. ex elephone. Erkamai comes from ex erkamai. Third person plural. Second aorist. Indicative active. What's the difference between first and second aorist? Aorist tense. Aorist verb tense. What's the difference between first and second aorist? Brother David, Just can you come up here to the board and show me the difference? Please. I know you can do it. I see it in your mind. First aorist. First aorist is from full of your action. Second aorist is just a little bit longer. That's right, brother. You get an A plus oh, tonight. Good teacher. A plus tonight. This, I, I, this you need to learn. These are the important things you need to learn. Okay? And that's why I keep asking you. Boy, you've got two A's tonight. I got a, I got a question for you. Yes. If it says, on behalf for the name... Mm -hmm. Indicating that the name of Jesus. Authority. It's, it's authority. Yes, it's authority. This word here is authority. It's by law. We get the word law. We get the word name. Name to him. That's what the name means. Name to him. Law to him. Your name. Your family name is okay. putting you out as a particular person in the world in space and time. And when, by law, when you have that name, when you sign that name, by law, you're giving somebody authority on a mate, on a motto, to buy a car today, to do whatever, buy a house. So John's paper of John's checks. John's saying here that they're sent out. Yeah, these strangers the, that have come to you now, he and, sent somebody sent with a letter. Me. He sent a letter over there before. Yeah. He's talking about a specific event. He sent a letter to this church before, and the Ostrophes intercepted it. And now he said it was sent out with authority. Okay? It was sent out with authority. Now, how much authority do you think the Apostle John had in the early churches? A lot. How much of the New Testament did the, the, the Apostle John write? Oh. Who was the oldest living Apostle? John. John. Who did Jesus give his mother care to? John. John. He was probably the first one that truly believed. Who did Jesus love and leaned on Jesus' breast John. at the Last Supper? John. John. Okay, this is getting real interesting, isn't it? He was the first... Uh, he probably lived to be about 138 years old, and he pastored the church at Ephesus for many years. He was the first of the apostles in the tomb as well, wasn't he? Well, one of them, yes. He was one of the first ones. He witnessed. He was persecuted. He was tortured. Okay? Now, on the name, they went out nothing receiving. They didn't receive any. Mayday. Udamia is another term that's kind of synonymous with this one. Mayday. May is a particle of negation. All right? I think it's page 268. Day. That's a weak adversity conjunction. And then the end there is ina, which means one. Go over not one thing. Nothing. Okay? Nothing. Receiving. 
They didn't go out to preach for money. My messengers to that church didn't come there to sell you a bill of goods like the altar fees and the rest of the Gnostics. Receiving there is a present participle active non plural masculine. Apo. Apo. What's apo mean? That's a preposition. All right. Apo is a preposition. You can look that one up on page 40. Okay. If you want to write that page number down, that'll be important to you later. You can look this term up, check and see if I'm telling you right. Apo tone ethnicon from the Gentiles. He didn't. Re- they didn't. They didn't receive one thing from the Gentiles. Nothing. There were. Uh, <coughs> there was a guy down there by Caesarea, on the coast of the Mediterranean. His name was. Uh, Cornelius, wasn't it? That was the first Gentile church that was ever established. They went to messengers from another church, went over there, they baptized the dudes and established a church there. Cornelius was what? He was a just man. All right? He was also an ethnic. He was also a Gentile. One of the nations. We got a word ethnic from this. Every time you get a term, the word ethnic, ethnic, Dakota, means Gentile originally. Ethnic. Your ethnic background. Okay? Ethnical. Not one thing from the Gentiles. Now, John says here, these purposes were sent out on behalf of the whole Christian creed. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. Romans 10 and verse 9. Acts 9 and 2 uh, and 19. <coughs> and verse 9. And verse 23, and then chapter 24 of Acts, and verse 22. By the way, this word ethnicon is used four times in the New Testament in this form. Okay? Four times in the New Testament in this form. So it's a rare word. Number eight. We're clipping right along here. Number eight. Do you have any questions on that? Are you learning? Brother David, I can see those Greek wheels twisting and twirling in your mind tonight. You've got a lot of rest today or something. Your mind's working real good tonight. It's flipping right along. I I, I want to tell you something else. You'll come here and you'll sit in the class for months and months and months and swear you're not learning anything. All of a sudden, it's going to fall together. And you're going to pick up your Bible one of these days and you can even pick up a Greek Bible. This one here is all Greek. There's no English in it, basically. And you can read it. After about three years, you can do that. You'll be able to read that. My wife, it trips her out because she can pick up the Greek and just read a whole lot of it. She's never studied Greek for one minute at home. Not one minute. She studies cookbooks. But not Greek. If they were cookbooks written in Greek, maybe she would be reading them. Maybe I ought to get her a Greek written cookbook and let her read it. Baklava. (laughs) Baklava. All right, but... (laughs) <laughs> you can pick it up and read it. All of a sudden, it just you realize that you can do it. You realize that you can do it. And that's neat. Number, verse number eight. Himes. Un. Athelomen. Hippo lambane. Tus. Tuontes. Two on toes, that is. Hina. Seen ergoi. Geno. Geno meta. Te. Alethea. We. Nominate plural, first person pronoun. Alright, he makes. We. Therefore, a little particle, page 295, you can go and write that one down to look up the history of that word. Okay? We, therefore, we should, we ought to, I'll write that word, ophelomen, uh, first person plural, present indicative active from ophelo. Okay? We ought. Hippo bon name. Epo Lombane. Two. 
two, uh, now by the way, this is used one time in the New Testament in this context. One time. This is a very rare word. Okay? We ought to entertain, we ought to, what it says under receive is what it literally means, but what it means is to protect. Not only to receive somebody, but to protect them. To protect them, to feed them, to clothe them, to house them, to protect them from any kind of problem. Now, what do you think that John's alluding to here? Diotrephes was a rascal. The ostracies was beating people up. He was. Now he says, some of these people that come to you, these strangers come to your house, now he said, you need to put them under your protection. And I'm going to send this letter to you, and I want the church, the real church, to hear it. Take them under their wing. Take them under the wing, yeah. Protect them like a hen would or baby chicken. Or <clears throat> what happens, Dakota, when Ocelot? When somebody comes near her babies, what happens? What does she do? Come on. <sighs> Boy, she, all, every hair stands on end and she starts blowing and hissing and going on. Protection. That's what the word is. Epo Lombane. The ones such are the such ones in order that. He not. Page 201, if you want to put down Ardina there. And then we have Sin Ergoi. Alright? That comes from Sin. That's S U N looking thing there. Symphony. Symphony. A symphony is when they make sounds together. This word Sin, that's the first part of the word symphony. Symphone. Alright? Sound together. And this here is together workers, co workers. Co-workers in what? In the ecclesia, in the assembly. All right? In order that, the co-workers we may become in the truth. We may become co-workers in the truth. We may become person, person, plural, present, subjunctive, middle voice. It's going to take some volition on your part because you're going to have to stand against the autocracy. This rascal, this man that does not believe in the humanity of Jesus Christ and the humanity of God in Christ. Jesus was not ashamed to be called man, was he? He was not ashamed to be called our brother because he was related to us. But the Jehovah Witnesses are ashamed to name him as God the Son. They're ashamed of him. And what will happen to them one of these days? Shame on you. Huh? They'll be ashamed of themselves. They will be ashamed of themselves because God did come down to this cesspool that we live in and become one of us to redeem us to Himself. We may become in the truth. Te Aletheia. All right? In the truth. Truth is a wonderful thing. The world does not know what truth is today, it seems like. Have you uh, ever read some court letters sometimes? If they don't sign, down at the bottom, under the perjury laws of the state of California, they can write anything in the letter. Because it can't be sworn as a testimony. But they'll just rattle off with all kinds of lies and things. And contracts. You ever wonder why the contracts are so stumpy and gone, blah, 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 and keep repeating themselves and everything in so many ways? John had some concrete examples of what he was talking about here. The atrophies. Now here we come to the other letter, verse number 9. Verse number 9. We're going to try to finish this book next week. So I think that I will probably read verse number 9 tonight. He drops off. Te, te, ecclesia, allah, ho, the low pro to own, out tone, the atrophies. We've learned about the atrophies, haven't we? Uk, epidexente. All right, he must. 
All right, now let's go back and look at this. Here we have a uh, Dios and Trapo. Okay. Dios. Dios, actually, the word Zeus comes from that word. When we have, when we talk about Dios in Latin, it's a Latin term. This is kind of a Latin Greek word put together here. What Diotrephes means, now Diotrephes could have been a good guy. Sometimes people have bad names. Do you know that? Uh, how, how many boys do you know that are named Judas today? Judas. Do you know any boys named Judas? How many any girls named Judah? Judy? Judy. Judy is, a, is masculine. Uh, Judas is a masculine. Judy is a feminine. Did you know that? No. All right. And you know what Judy and Judah mean? Or Ju uh, you know what they mean? The praise of Jehovah. It's a good name. But Judas ruined that name. Judas ruined it. When we talk about somebody being a Judas, we talk about somebody being a Matahari. Matahari. Who was that dude? Now, you probably are too young, some of you know the term Matahari. That's someone that betrays you. All right? We know what a Jezebel is. Jezebel, now that name sounds really nice. Say Jezebel. Jezebel. But the idea of being, how many people, how many girls do you know called Jezebel today? Not one. Not one. I had a dog or two named that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good name for a dog. Yeah. But you know what? The name was a fine name at one time until somebody ruined it. Well, Diotrephes had a good name. You could also say someone that's nourished by God. if you wanted to bring it over in the right context. I don't think anybody named anybody Diotrephes after this thing in these churches. Zeus nourishes and feeds. Zeus nourishes and feeds. <coughs> that little tape player is a pain in the neck sometimes, but it's always there. It's almost always. If I lose it on everything else, it's on that little cassette recorder. <laughs> And if I'm going to study a class, it's going to be on cassette because I can stop it and go it. <laughs> and I, I don't have to go figure out where it was the last time. It's going to be right there when I finish. I wrote, first person singular, first aorist, indicative active. What's first aorist mean? Punctiliar. Very punctiliar. I wrote. I did this. I wrote. E grapso. We got our word grapho from that. We got our word graph. Graphics. All of these came from the Greek. Okay, you got that, Dakota? Graph. All right. Graph. I wrote something. Te. All right. It means an indefinite pronominal adjective. I wrote something to the church. He wrote a letter to this church, to the church, this specific church here. Okay. But, all of, page 15, if you want to write that down there. Strong adversity conjunction. But the one whole, nominative singular masculine definite article. And then we have a, a present participle active, nominative singular masculine. Philo, tro, te, u. The one that likes to be in the lead. The one that likes to be in the lead. How many of you know anything about horses? Anybody know anything about horses? They like to be in the lead. There's one horse that will always be in the lead in a, in a pack. Joaquin Marietta. He had a horse that he loved very much. He called him El Tigre. El Tigre. What's El Tigre mean? Uh, the tiger. Uh, the tiger. Alright. Uh, you know why they call him the tiger? El Tigre? Because he was a buckskin. With a stripe down his back and down his, you know, how the buckskins do. He had a black mane and tail and, and a kind of yellow looking tan body. And he called him El Tigre because he had the stripes on him. He loved that horse. He was a great horse, El Tigre. And they, the history of that horse, uh, I mean, you've seen the, 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 the legend of Zorro. Zorro and Joaquin Marietta were the same person, okay? But he, uh, when he was wild, right, right, rounding up wild horses in the San Joaquin Valley, by the way, what does San Joaquin mean? 
How many of you know what that means? Kit Fox. Huh? <laughs> San Joaquin Valley. <laughs> San Joaquin. <laughs> it means St. John's Valley. St. John's. Yeah, St. John's Valley. All right. Well, out here in the San Joaquin Valley, there were tens of thousands of Mustangs all over the place. And he'd go out here and grab these Mustangs. And he said he got one, and a lot of the horses, this is a very a vivid thing, that, that, but they carried these long swords. They had swords. These walking Marianne's men had swords. And they would go out there and they'd cut hay down sometimes and throw it in the corrals. And by the way, our front yard there where we lived was one of the corrals where walking Marianne kept his horses in our front yard. He watered his horses in our backyard there in an, old, uh, an artesian well or spring out there, a running spring, because it was the only place with it was pure water. All the rest of it was all stagnant water. So he had to stay there where we are, where we live. And he'd go out there and they'd cut some of this grass because there's tall grass all over the place and they put the horses out there. But now, as they would go along, if they saw a horse that was uh, trying to carry the other ones off, they'd just ride alongside him and reach over and cut his throat and drop it. Just drop it. Or they'd go by and they'd cut its hamstring and the horse would fall off. He couldn't go. They just, any horse that'd give them any trouble, they'd just kill them. The rest of the good horses, they had, and they said for 300 miles, there was a great tall, 18 hand tall horse. Great horse that was in the lead all the time. And Joaquin Mary and said, Ed said, I want that horse. I'm going to call him Mozo. Mozo. What's Mozo mean? Mozo. Jose, you know what Mozo means? Jose, Mozo. You know what Mozo means? Irma? Mom, you know what Mozo means? He goes back, it means burden carrier servant. And he rode that horse. That horse for 300 miles was the first horse in the, in the group, was the leader of the pack. Now this word here, philo first, loving to be first, it comes from philo tro pero. It means loving to be out in front. A racehorse. What was some of your favorite racehorses, Dakota? Come on. How many of you got a in the history? What? That yeah. Barberry, I like him. What was that? Man of War. Man of War. All right. Sea Biscuit. Oh, Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit was a little short horse, but you know what? Nothing could outrun him. He ran. Even that great big tall horse, he outran him, didn't he? I had a horse one time called Red Ears. And he had a lot of thoroughbred blood in it, but he was, uh, he was an Appaloosa. But some years he would be solid white, and he had black eyes. And he had red ears on the inside, but he was white all over. Some years he'd be out like a strawberry roan. But I tell you what, when you get out in the mountains or that thing or anything, and he, he was a running Appaloosa. They had raced him when he was young, because that horse couldn't stand to be second. He was in the lead. We had a little horse a long time ago. He was 21 years old, and his name was Red. They took him right off the horse track, and old Melvin Anderson took him out there, and they used him out in that roping. And he was a great horse. When he'd come out of the rope and shoot, he would jump 20 or 30 feet because he wanted to be out there. They took him 20-something years old and they were still running races with that old thoroughbred. And he was a great roping horse too because he wanted to be first. He had to be out in the lead. Here's a man that's like that. Right here. A man that wants to be first. He's got to be first in the lead all the time. Now, there's leaders in churches, aren't there? Aren't there leaders in churches? I've always tried to look at myself as a leader in a church. But you know what a leader should do? A leader should be a servant, Moses. Mm -hmm. He should be a first, a servant. A servant. The Baptists in the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church put their priests up in high balconies preaching down to the people. The Catholics dug a hole in them and had them preach up. And the Baptists dug a hole and had their people preach up to him because that was a servant. But the servant was a leader. The servant is a leader. Your pastor should show you how to be a servant. He should. Teach you how to be a servant. This man wanted to be a big shot. He wanted to be a he wanted to be a leader. He was going to, he took control of this church. One is a loving to be first. And the word also is fond of turmoil. Uh Philo Poneo, fond of turmoil. That's a synonym also. Philo Poneo, 
fond of turmoil, like to argue. Brother David, remember when we went out there and we saw this guy out there, the Sonic there, and you said, why didn't you talk to him? I said, it didn't, wouldn't do any good. I don't like to argue. I will preach and teach all day long, but I won't argue with a man for five minutes. That's a waste of my time. And he'd already set his ways. There wasn't anything I could teach him. Theotrophies. The church boss. Nourished by Zeus. Not he receives. Us. Theotrophies does not receive us. Theotrophies was a divider. Theotrophies was the one that wanted to be out in the lead. He was a racehorse out of the race. Racehorse out of the race. Old Mozo, when walking, walking, Marietta got shot. He was riding Mozo. And supposedly he, there were some people after him who shot him through the leg. And the bullet went through his leg and went into Mozo and killed Mozo. And then his brother, named Joaquin Marietta, also picked him up and took him home. And in three days he had fled to death and died of the infection. They didn't cut his head off down there at Cantua Creek. That wasn't him. The horse that they got down there was El Tigre. And they shot the man, which was uh, Joaquin Marietta's groom, the man, the hostler, the horse handler, and they took him for walking Marietta and cut his head off and put it in that pickled brandy jar. But they had El Tigre. And then they shot him while he was riding Mozo, the one that was in the lead for 300 miles. Well, may you be in the lead in your family in God's work. May you lead gently. And you may you lead as a servant. But don't ever be caught being a theotrophist. Not he receives us. He won't accept me or he won't accept anyone that I send to you. Beautiful, beautiful words of, of order that we have tonight. Is this the fourth of the month? Mm -hmm. yeah. Fourth, six four, two thousand eight. I'll look in that thing years from now, and I'll remember when I taught these verses. I looked at when I taught the book of Ephesians. Remember, Brother David, I said I hadn't taught this book for thirty years. <laughs> but it was all of God's word is beautiful. I hope that it means something to you. I hope it means more tonight than it ever you saw in it before. When you look at it, every word in Greek it means a whole lot. Leaves a lot more than just reading over. I've been reading the book of Hebrews over and over again. Of course, I'm reading the book of Third John at the same time. I'll study on Third John, and then I'll jump over there in Hebrews and jump up and down. And I'll come over here and Third John. I'll see something fantastic and gigantic that I want to share with you, and then I'll jump over in the other book. And then I'm working on the Bible in eight ages, and I'm working on the doctrines of the Bible and everything. This keeps you real busy. Trying to keep all that divided up in your gourd. Well, I can't wait to hear you preach on uh, Hebrews 10. Hebrews the 10th chapter? Well, we'll get there. I hope. <laughs> the Lord willing and the creek don't rise. God bless every one of you tonight. I hope, I hope God's word meant uh, something to you. I hope you carry it out and go out and do something eternal this week. And we'll start in verse 10 next week. And how far do we got? 14 or 15? Is 14. 15. All right, so we'll go five verses next week, and then, I hope five verses next week. And then the next week we're going to start in the book of Hebrews, which is, well, all of God's Word is beautiful. But I think it's going to be super refreshing. In 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, we've studied the person of Jesus Christ, that He is God in flesh. That he really lived and walked among God, really lived and walked among mankind. But what does the book of Hebrews say, Brother David? The book of Hebrews is, is about uh, um, that Jesus is very God. Jesus is very God. Kind of saying it like 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the Gospel of John. Whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, and I tell you what, we're going to see some fantastic stuff in there. 
and some surprising things. Because it quotes from the Septuagint and not the Hebrew Old Testament. And there's a lot of difference. We know that. I mean, we can see the different things. And we'll study them as we go. But uh, getting back to 1 John. 1 John uh, wants, us, wants to emphasize, John emphasizes that the Savior that he served and the Savior that he leaned on his chest, the Savior he saw die on the cross of Calvary, was really a human being, a person that really died, he lived, breathed, ate, and slept, just like we do. God became flesh, and he is not ashamed to be called our brother. We should not be ashamed to call him our brother. <coughs> brother David, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Sir? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your death on the cross, your salvation, you spilled your blood for our sinful souls, Lord, that you redeemed us. Father, we thank you for these Gospels that we've been studying. And Lord, that you would write these words on our heart, that we'll go out and we'll first live them and then tell others about them, Father. We pray for the lost, especially our lost children, that they would they would turn their hearts toward you, Father. Father, we just uh, we just can't thank you enough for, for your death on the cross, for what the precious gift that you've given us. In your precious name, amen. 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 Thank all of you. <coughs>